Hello friends, in this video tutorial, we will learn about argument transforms and tables in SpecFlow. As a part of agenda, we will cover what are argument transformations and what is the need of transformations. And secondly, we will see how to use SpecFlow tables in scenarios and features. So let's get started with the argument transformations. I'll use the same Visual Studio project to illustrate argument transformation. First of all, let's see what argument transformation is. It is essentially a way to consolidate multiple arguments in a scenario step into a single argument, <coughs> which you can think of as an object or any any other kind of so let's see what exactly is transformation let's understand it with the help of an example suppose you have a class which converts a given timestamp object to duration in minutes so a timestamp object can have multiple parts to it it can have just minutes it can be a combination of minutes and hours it can be a combination of minutes hours and seconds so on and so forth so if you were to write a spec flow scenario or feature file for it for all these different type of combination you would have essentially written multiple definitions or implementation for this exact same binding which would have just differed in terms of number of arguments and you would have ended up doing the same logic in each step so step argument transformations come to rescue what we would do here is there is a special binding with an uh, attribute called step transformation so let's first see what exactly what kind of feature that we are trying to do with this transformation I've created a file spec argument transformations feature file here you can see I have three scenarios and they will all hit the converting timestamp to minutes functions class that we have and you can see that in the given step of all these three scenarios you have arguments or combinations in different formats like the first one just have days second one has days hours and minutes third one has days hours minutes and second so on and so forth so let's see how argument transformation helps to achieve it now i've added an argument transformation step binding file here look at the binding with attribute step argument transformation and the result of this argument transformation will be a time span object so the input to this argument transformation is again a regular expression and this regular expression converts it into days hours minutes depending on what all inputs are given in the scenario and it essentially returns a new time span object with the available values now how it is used in the existing scenario let's see that so if you see the first given step which says given I have entered something into the timestamp to minute converter now this something is nothing but essentially an entire timestamp object which we want to get from the transformed input so if you see here the return type that we have mentioned in the argument of this binding is time span this is the stitching piece which ensures that whenever this time span is the return type it tries to find out if there is an argument transformation binding available if it is there it matches the regex and returns the time span object which is calculated as a result of the transformation so with this we directly obtain this timestamp object and now we can simply pass on this object to the actual application under test which is the timestamp to minute converter class 
and we can validate the output as per the assertion step. Let's try running this. We expect this to pass. And here you go. So we can see these all these scenarios have passed and they are using the argument transformation. The second part of this tutorial is to understand the tables in specflow. So specflow tables is a concept which is which really comes in handy when you write tests and scenarios which populate objects in your class. So suppose you have a student database kind of application where in the input you expect all the fields of a student object now if you don't cast it into an object of your domain you will have to work with these fields individually or you will have to write your own domain models for the class but with this tables concept you can directly convert the user input to the instance of object in your domain model so let's illustrate it with an example we have a student info class which has four fields first name last name age and year of birth and in the scenario the way we need to write tables is separated by pipe the first line or the first row of this table denotes the names of the fields which directly map to the object in your domain model so if you see the field names or property names are same as the attributes in your domain object and these are the values so let's see how the binding looks like so specflow library provides helpers this is the class or this is a namespace that we are using specflow.assist which provides table helpers so you can see that the type of input for that step is table and with the with using table assist helpers we can directly create an enumerable object of the domain model so here student info is our domain model you can simply write table dot create set student info which gives you an enumerable student info object and since we have a student list kind of object declared in our steps we convert it into list to get the object and in the next step what we are trying to assert is whether that got populated or casted properly or not so if you see the illustration steps it just iterates over the objects that were populated from the table and prints the first name and last name of the student data supplied in the input so let's try running this and in the output you can see here then the student data should be casted into poco objects and here we go that we have printed the first name and last name of the inputs received from the scenario so this is about specflow tables which are really helpful when you have multiple domain models inside your test and you can simply cast into the object that you want to that's it for this video tutorial. Thank you.